Up next on Inside Mac, Champ Car. <laughs> We're talking trailers and racing. I, Bill, I didn't even tease a show. I do. I, I teased. I was. I. Did, I don't even know what I was saying. Well, you know, you have to be, write big things on the wall, like behind you. So I have know. It, have it in front of you. I. 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 Whatever they can. All right, we are live here on Inside Champ Car. This is Bill Strong. I'm with Scott Mann, and we're waiting for Brian to come up. Sorry, folks, we had a uh, slight tech. Let me make sure the sound's working on this because sound never works for me. Live here on Inside. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So uh, S Brian actually had a uh, has a windstorm going out there in California, and as we started the show, uh, he went. Offline, and there he is, Brian Belansky. Sorry, Brian, we don't have your fancy music and all that cool stuff right now, but we do have video and audio. <clears throat> you there? As he, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we, yep, we can hear you. Um, I'm in the dark. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much like every Champ Car show we've ever done. We're always in the dark. I was just, just going to say, but he lives in California, so that also is another reason for being in the dark, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. This is, hey, if, there's, if there's nothing else about this edition, it's got to be comic relief. This is, this is hysterical. <laughs> this is awesome. So, uh, Scott, you are uh, one of our champ car racers out there on the West Coast out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, you well, did come and see you in Atlanta last you week. You did, yes. I unfortunately I didn't get to spend time with you. I wanted to, but we were so busy. We had Bob That's Varsha. Right, <laughs> yeah, we had Bob Varsha. You were racing. Um, yeah, there was a lot going on at, at Road Atlanta. Now you're um, you're getting ready to go to a Lemons race this weekend at Thunder Hill. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I, forgive me, I'm actually literally driving my truck. So we had a freak snowstorm in Las Vegas today. Nothing necessarily accumulated, but uh, we had, first of all, like 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. We dropped 31 degrees in a matter of about 14 minutes. And then we ended up having snow flurries so bad that a lot of the stuff that I was going to haul to our transporter this afternoon to be ready for this 31 degrees tonight, I was unable to get there. Are we off air again? No, no, we're good. We're good. Okay, good. And so um, I, I ended up having to do it this evening. And at the same time, for all of the people that are out there, if you don't say it right now, happy Valentine's Day. And I am on the way home to be with my Valentine. And so we're, we're trying to squeeze everything in. So I'm driving home. I'm in my truck. We just dropped <laughs> off all the stuff. And we're doing Champ Car. <laughs> yes, Champ Car. So uh, you, you were at Road Atlanta here Two weeks ago, what was that like racing in the snow? Oh, wait, it didn't snow this year. I know. I, I actually, my 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 favorite part of the uh, drivers' meeting in the in the morning is when I, I turned to Dana. I said, "Hey, Dana, can you please let us know what time it's going to start <laughs> snowing tomorrow?" That was our Friday drivers' meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was uh, it. Was pretty funny because that was literally the conversation during the drivers' meeting with everybody as we we're waiting for it to start. Oh, I wonder if it's going to snow. And of course, what was happening just days before is the weather forecasters were uh, quite adamant about precipitation of some sort, probably snow for most of that weekend. And what did we get? We had an absolutely beautiful, beautiful weekend. So I don't know. I, I, I think it's um, my 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 right coast, if you will, um, dreams brought from uh, California Nevada, Las Vegas, or whatever that I brought out to you guys and gave you some good, good, uh, good weather because it turned out to be a great weekend. It was cold, but it was great. Who are you racing with? So I, I actually came with the Chandler School. Oh, and okay. So, uh, uh, Dana Blackhurst was not there, unfortunately. Dana, being the Dana of the Chandler School, um, he is still uh, recovering from uh, a. a pretty good bit of surgery but um he sent his race team out and brought in a couple of um, hot shoes um uh mark saroyan was there uh chris long was there who was also a crew chief for some of the big wig teams that run uh 
uh, with multiple different uh, uh, pro series. And he actually decided to, to uh, try the whole uh, driving type routine and did an absolutely amazing job. Wait, Chris Long, not Chris well. Long, not Chris Long, the football player, former UVA. No, no, no. Chris oh, okay. Long, the, the, the crew chief. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and then myself, unfortunately, our reliability was, uh, it was, it was not a particularly well-developed car. It was fast in a straight line, but as soon as you put a corner there, it basically parked. And so, uh, but it was, it was fun. And the racers were, it was competitive. I mean, the field was unbelievably competitive. There was people that were just out for blood, but of course it was the championship race. And, uh, it was good to see, it was good to see some really, really incredibly skilled drivers out there. And I saw a lot of them hand me my lunch and, uh, take me to school many times. So, Bill, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I don't. I don't know if it sounds good or anything. This is the oddest thing. I have a little uh, tactical LED light throwing light on my face right now, and uh, we're out here in Pasadena, and the Santa Ana Wings just decided that uh, they're not podcast fans, <laughs> and uh, um, knocked out the the power and the internet. And uh, thank you, Bill, for making the stream happen real fast. And uh, thank you, Scott, for hanging in with us here. Um, Absolutely. And uh, crazy stuff. I've never had to do this before. Um, so, so no snow at Road Atlanta. I, I'm shocked. <laughs> it was cold. It, all I can say is it was super, super cold. Well, he's but, from Las um, Vegas, too. We were all out there in tank tops and shorts, and he's all bundled up going, oh, my God, it's so cold out here. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I was bundled that, up too. It was, it, it was cold. <laughs> hey, uh, Alex is making fun of you for trying to plug in your phone there, Ryan. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Now you got the fire department oh, outside th- of your house. <laughs> I actually think the tree literally went down right by our house. Oh, okay. I saw the, the you know, the, the, the yeah. red light in the window there. So, Scott. Yeah, you're going to start to hear chainsaws. It's going to be fun. That's good. Hey, Scott. So. You you have a pretty cool job. You run a business where you you uh, get to play with cars all day long. Um, you put I don't know little tiny V eight engines into little tiny German cars. Tell us a little about uh, um, your company there. Well, you teed that up really nicely. Do, do I need to say any more? I think that's about it. Oh, wait a second. We've been doing it for 40 years. That's yeah. probably the big news. Uh, Renegade Hybrids is the name of the company. Uh, for those folks that have uh, that have maybe heard of the name before or maybe you haven't, yes, we are the company. We are considered the antichrist to the Porsche world. <laughs> we put V8, yes, Chevy V8 engines into Porsches. Oh, blasphemy. That's terrible. May I get in a car accident right now and die in infamy? But um, no, actually, we've been doing it for 40 years. Um, it's been um, it's been challenging uh, to slowly but surely prove that we have the engineering prowess to be on the planet. And I would say the last 10 years, the naysayers, the the uh, purists and all the various different people that um, that have thought that we were going to fall off, you know, with with California when when um, the unchanging lanes, pardon me, when uh, when the big earthquake hits, it's just not going to happen for us because now we're in Las Vegas, and uh, so we're going to avoid that big uh, that big problem. But um, yeah, for those folks that have ever looked at um, potentially repowering your Porsche with a little bit more horsepower, a little less weight, um, and uh, Want to see something pretty cool? Renegade hybrids. That's the that's the place. And then, so, h- yeah. hybrid has nothing to do with electric power, right? You're just dropping in Chevy V8s, or is there a hybrid electric version coming down the road? So, because we've been doing this for 40 years, and 40 years ago um, there was no such thing as electric hybrids, or at least that I know of. Um, right. There, the the name hybrids was uh, synonymous with essentially putting slot A into slot B, and neither one of them being from the same continent. And that was uh, that was how we we began. And so it's always been renegade hybrids. And then I don't know the electric world decided to take over the hybrid uh, um, name, and now everybody is calling us to get their Prius batteries replaced. I'm oh, not kidding. That's hilarious. <laughs> now, now one of the other companies that you run there, it, it's. It's um, a tr- a stacker trailer, which yes. is kind of how I met you because I saw it at Sonoma. You brought out this absolutely cool um, open trailer, 
you had two Miatas on it, and it's everything I've always wanted because you can take two cars and tow it behind a half ton truck, quarter ton Ironically, truck. Ironically, it's it's behind me right now. Oh, funny! <laughs> so that very very same trailer that brought us together, Bill, is right behind me now. And there's my radar detector. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, it's called Stack Light Trailers. Um, so being in and around the automotive industry for such a long period of time and watching um, the same story, the husbands and wives showing up where the husband is driving the great big transporter and uh, he's got the enclosed trailer with this nice race car in the back and she's driving her spec Boxster with no AC, no heat on super stiff suspension with uh, racing seats and uh and she's showing up all grumpy and pissed off at the track after driving six hours. And the husband has been sitting there just cruising in this great big giant $300,000 diesel pusher. Yeah, it was just not a scenario I like to see. And that very, very same story that I just gave you as a kind of a, a scenario is actually what I've seen in real life multiple times. It made me think there's got to be a way that we can put together a relatively lightweight two stack trailer in such a way that it wouldn't be super long and it wouldn't cause the people that are uh, that are. Uh, using these long uh, rigs to be over limit in places like California where they are very strict about limit, or maybe even the Canadians that are coming into the States, the snowbirds that are uh, looking to take their, you know, their Prius and their golf cart or something like that. They're not having to buy a double long trailer and then getting pegged because they're over limit. And so I said, okay, let me figure this out. Criteria was no cables, no electric motors, no hydraulics, nothing to fail, everything completely manual, half ton class pickup truck capable, two vehicles, both of them relatively lightweight, but not so lightweight that you wouldn't be able to carry like a couple Porsches on it or something like that. And I started off with a um, napkin, went to graph paper, went to CAD went to engineering, went to engineering and testing, to prototyping, to production. And now I am developed, I have now developed and, and uh, sell stack light trailers in two versions, one which is called the light and one which is called the max. And they're selling like crazy. Cool. And the, the website is stacklighttrailers.com. So if there's anybody out there left that isn't uh, celebrating Valentine's Day, we like like I said earlier, Bill, when we were off the air, we should call this like like Singles Night because <laughs> anybody that's going to be watching this is likely going to be single. But uh, yeah, go to stacklighttrailers.com and check it out. It's a it's a pretty cool idea. It's definitely even better in execution because of how it works. Right now we uh, we I've seen it work. I saw how easy it was to load the cars on. You even have a video on the website. But uh, what I find cool about it is that I could bring two cars to a race and not have to lug this. I have a big open tra or a closed trailer, which just eats the diesel. And uh, these open trailers are a lot more friendly on fuel than uh, some of these closed ones are. Yeah, it's um, it's if you think about it, it's a very, very stout single car trailer. So you can carry something pretty heavy, a big truck or something like that with a backpack. And if you decide that you want to carry like a lighter vehicle, let's say, you know, like a Porsche, like a 996 or, a, you know, a Miata, an NC Miata, an ND Miata or something like that. And then, then you wanted to carry a, uh, an additional vehicle on the backpack up to 3000 pounds on the backpack. That gives you the idea. And the backpack is actually kind of at a slant on the rear for those people that are kind of digging into the internet trying to find it right now. If you see that there's a car kind of hanging off the back a little bit, look at how I designed the center gravity. The car that's on the back side of the trailer, half of it is below the center of mass, and the other car, which is down below, is all sitting below the center of mass. And so when people look at it and they say, well, that seems really top heavy, it's not. And then if you look at where the axles are located, it's also, it looks like it'd be rear heavy, but it's also not rear heavy. It's actually balanced quite nicely. And so stacklighttrailers.com, check it out. Yep. Now that segues over. So, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I would say, what's the difference between the max and the light? Four feet. So the max, so the industry that has really, really taken off, that, that really wants this, is not only the racing industry, but the off-road industry. And because nowadays, you know, the, the racers are getting 
longer, bigger, more travel, and actually getting lower in center of gravity. Some of the new twin turbo or turbocharged razors that are actually pretty long, a lot of those guys are coming to me saying, I want to put two of, two of those sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollar $80,000 razors on one of your trailers. Can you build a longer one? I said, sure. So I've now designed and built a longer one. So the two of those, one on the backpack and one underneath will fit. And it accommodates them absolutely beautifully. It's literally a perfect fit. Plus, and because you said it's PG, uh, we can we can say this. It is a badass thing to show up when you've got a razor down below and a second razor kind of at a slant in the back, looking like it's jumping through the air. You're showing up <laughs> to the dunes, or you're showing up to you know something like. Super cool concept, and it it always. When you go to the dunes or you go to the racetrack, it always gets tons of people crowded around and going, wow, that's kind of cool. How does that work? Well, check out the video. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking at it. It, it. it sounds like it's a great idea to bring two race cars, but it's also, if your significant other isn't necessarily a racer, you can put a street car back there. And while you're at the racetrack doing your thing, your significant other can go and, you know, go shopping, go sightseeing, you know, any of a number of different things on a street car. So, uh, I, I see a lot of different uh, applications for it um, besides just bringing two competition cars to the track. So I think it's a great idea. It's true. And, I, you know, you put your race car down below, you put your golf cart in the back. You put your, you know, yeah. if you're a, if you're, you know, an elderly couple or something like that and all you have is a single vehicle, you put your Toyota Corolla down below and then you put your golf cart in the back and it's behind your diesel pusher or a couple off-road vehicles or you just use it as a single car trailer but when your buddy wants to come along and bring his race car then you throw the backpack on the back the backpack is completely and totally removable including the uprights in the new version which Bill hasn't seen even the uprights that support the backpack are completely removable so it is just a super strong single car trailer and then you can add the backpack to it, and that would be only for the times that you would need it. Otherwise, it's just not there. It's not needed. What's the price point? Um, <laughs> it is a little expensive because it is a hybrid trailer. Ah, I use the hybrid again. It is a steel framed trailer with an aluminum deck and the aluminum backpack. I did that on purpose to maximize strength but also to give the lightest package so that you have the greatest payload. So $15.95 and $17.95, that's $15,000 and $17,000, just to, so it's $15,995, sorry, and $17,995. However, when people, now that Jaws have all collectively hit the ground, let me say two trailers and two pickup trucks, two drivers and fuel, is what you would need to do in order to transport the same thing. Right, right. And exactly. I'm selling these like crazy to people who are realizing that's considerably more expensive than just buying one of my trailers. And that's what works out right. the best. So let's segue from the trailers over to the Miatas that sit on those trailers. So a couple of years ago, we're at Sonoma and uh, you guys are doing pretty well in the race. And one of your drivers uh, got a wheel off and tumbled about 2000 times across the track and came to a rest and walked out, got out like Superman. And, but, uh, that was a pretty scary situation, especially as a car owner. Yeah. I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll tell you that, um, that story first person. So Bill, you and I are, you were good friends. I mean, you've stayed at my house. You've met Trista. You're one of my most favorite people on the planet. And I'm not saying that because I'm blowing smoke up your tissue. I literally, absolutely love your vivacious personality and things like that. And yes, you can send me that check you've been threatening to send me. <laughs> but uh, that, that being the case, um, you know, I, I like when I'm able to, you know, kind of hobnob with the end, rub elbows. I missed you in Road Atlanta, but there's been multiple races in the past that we've spent good times together, including that one at Sonoma. I'm correction at Laguna Seca because that's where it was. Oh, that's right, Laguna. Well, yes. that particular weekend, I had spent a little bit of time chit-chatting with you and I knew that you were going to be driving the pace car and you're going to be doing a lot of your broadcast and basically wearing 17 different hats like you typically do every single time you do one of these champ races you work your tail off and and somehow some way you pull it together and it's always amazing and so when when the end of the second day was was uh, fast approaching about 25 minutes from the end um we get a red flag 
And we happen to be up on top of one of the buildings in the infield that's directly across from the main bridge that's right there at turn one at Laguna Seca. And it was myself and the other two team members because we were getting close to the end. So we were watching our driver, Ken, who was doing an exceptionally good job, uh, motor around and hold a very good position. I believe it was second place in class. Um, the red flag, you know, of course, we jumped on the radio and said, hey, red flag, Ken, no response. Again, red, hey, Ken, Ken, you got to copy Ken, no response. Hey, Ken, just let you know if you can hear us, we got a red flag, no response. We started getting a little bit concerned. We go scurrying down the stairs and I beelined it out to the, the fence that separated myself from the um, from where Bill was sitting in the pace car. And I'm like, Bill, Bill, what's going on, Bill? And he kind of did one of those, uh, it's your guy, I think he's okay, and you split. And I'm like, oh, crap. And so um, we, of course, freaked out. They rolled the ambulance, all that sort of stuff. Now, keep in mind, our team member, Ken, he was celebrating a 17th, 70th year on this planet, and he's a hell of a good driver. He's also in incredibly good shape, but it's still scary for anybody to flip a car. And uh, so needless to say, there's not any blood in the three of us until such time as between Bill and a couple of the other uh, members of Champ Car, they reassured us that he was safely in the ambulance. Uh, he was going to be uh, brought into the in infield care facility for quick observation. And then he was then transported to be checked out. Everything turned out to be perfectly fine. He did have some bumps and bruises and things like that. But to give you an idea, a lot of people that poo poo the process of going through, our cage was pretty darn solid. But even the experience in the day, well, there was we're, a we're, lot of people from Champ that looked at our cage and kind of took notes and things like that. It became a really, really good talking point for continuing to evolve with the safety with Champ. And that's one of the things that I love about the series the most. You guys do not far out. You guys are really strict about everything safety-wise. And so thank you very, very much for being so good about keeping us safe and keeping us alive because – I'm sure there's other series that may not do as good as you guys do. Well, one of the things I yeah. learned, learned a few years ago was to, to, uh, you know, once everything's cleared up and the, you know, all the drivers are being looked at and the team has allowed me to come over and take a look at the car, or if it's an impound and we're legally allowed to take a look at it, we try to get pictures of the cage, the safety, you know, make sure all the safety bits worked. And if we find something that didn't work, like we had, a couple of years ago at, at one of our races at Charlotte where a, a footwell was intruded when uh, right after that, the uh, board allowed the extra uh, tubes to go into that to help protect the driver's feet. And uh, you know, we, we try to look for problems before they become a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no question. And you do catch some stuff that's pretty diabolical. And so yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know some of the stories that I've heard from you guys before, and uh, it's it's crazy. Now, uh, that does bring up a point. When we went to Road Atlanta, um, you guys are no longer doing in-person gear check. You're actually doing this virtual gear check where we go through the process of essentially um, attesting to the gods that be that, uh, that we have exactly the right gear. Do you guys do any spot checks? Uh not my department, but I believe uh, they will be doing spot checks if they haven't already. Um, I know they're looking at for things when uh, you leave pit out. Uh, we can s certainly see different types of of, of um, suits being used or maybe the helmet. You know, the guy comes up there with a big eye opener, you know, the, uh, the eye opening in the helmet. We know that's not a 1990s helmet. <laughs> you know, it's more, more like 1980s. But um, but yeah, they they kind of do. I personally, I still think we should have stuck with the uh, in person stuff because some of the stuff we we caught. But you know, we have you know the board wanted to move up to uh, where we're at now and and let's see how it works. But Go the, ahead, the problem with in person, not the problem, but even with in person, people can choose not to wear the stuff they brought in. Right. Back. So um, you know, I've I've seen weird things where. 
You know, they had all the stuff in the bag, but that doesn't mean that was the stuff. Or, or, or a driver like me, who's who's a man of ample girth, you know, walks in with beautiful <laughs> brand new underwear that's, you know, extra small. And there's, I mean, I couldn't get my left leg into this underwear. Yeah. Um, right. You know, so just because they have the gear at the check doesn't necessarily mean they're going to wear it. So. Right, right. And and we saw that too. And 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 it's uh again, it's it's not my department, but you know, we try to enforce the rules that are that are out there and it seemed to go pretty well at uh Road Atlanta. We just needed to get everybody to sign their waivers and we'll talk more about that later in the show. But uh but yeah, so Scott, where you, so you guys are on your way to Thunder Hill for a uh, 24 hours of lemons where a lot of us actually got our start and yes, uh sir. you as well. Um, what got you st- normally Brian would have started off with this at the beginning, but I was still in s- shell shock <laughs> having to start the show myself. So, um, w- how did you get started in racing? Um, well, it actually goes all the way back to when, uh, renegade hybrids was, uh, was more or less in its infancy. Um, I was putting small blocks in nine fourteens and, not really knowing how to drive particularly well and being a complete and total idiot. And a few people said, you need to go to a school. You need to learn how to drive better and you need to calm down a little bit. And of course I was young, dumb and in California and I lived a very, very short hop, skip and a jump away from some of the best, most notable canyons in Southern California. Um, everything from Mulholland to Canaan to Temescal to Sycamore to Little Sycamore. And anybody who lives out there knows exactly where I'm talking about. And I was racing every single one of those. And uh, and it was actually the previous owner of Renegade um, many, many years ago that I was working for at the time who said, you need to go to a school. So Skippy, Skip Barber was one of my first schools. I ended up at, up at Laguna Seca after going through a three-day racing school and joining their uh, Barber Challenge series, and, and then I was approached by uh, um, the the staff there to do some teaching because I have a teaching background, and uh, bec- that became my home track for a short period of time. And I started working more schools and things like that. And then I, I I have I have so much massive amounts of seat time, but none of it necessarily in anything that would be notable. It's um, the, the, my best experiences that I ever had was I have driven Mario Andretti's two-seater Indy car that he gives rides in. And so I have had the privilege to sit multiple times in Mario Andretti's sweat. And that is no <laughs> slouch of a car. And um, Mario is an incredible guy. He's also tiny and I'm not. And so you can imagine the insert that was pulled out of the way so that I could fit in this car. But um, um it, that's uh that was an honor it truly was it was um you know the guy that that uh once once mario was done giving his 15 or so rides to the uh to the celebrities or to the press or whatever he got out did a lot of glad handing and another guy that nobody even knew his name jumped in and gave 300 rides to everybody else that was in line and every single one of those people went oh that's not mario oh it's gonna suck and then when they got out they're like holy crap that was crazy who is that guy is that like the stick or is that the mario incarnate or something like that anyway I heard it all. but so, it was it was it was truly it was an honor absolutely an honor i never knew the name of those people that were sitting behind me but I will tell you every single one of them got out of the car with a new appreciation of what what auto racing is like. So there's probably a lot of people out there that think Mario Andretti is five foot 10, five foot 11. That's true. He's like (laughs) five, six or five, five, or maybe by now even a five, four, he's shrinking. Last time I met him, I'm like, you're a little guy. (laughs) So what keeps bringing you back to champ car, Scott? Well, I wish you guys would come out to the West Coast, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because Working I wouldn't it. be racing me, this weekend for another one of the series. But, um, okay, I I will, I, I, I love the question, Brian. That's the best question of the night. I am actually going to, because this is the PG of, um, of, of um, YouTube, I am going to go ahead and excoriate some of the other series and I will probably never race with them ever again after this, if it ever goes truly public. But Lemons, albeit it is fun, it is a doo parade. And the few of us that go there to really race 
oftentimes get, um, um, how should we say, marginalized because we're not dressing up in condoms and wearing stupid hats with themes that would be best left in someone's imagination. And so the series, as far as the racing goes among the real racers, is pretty cool mm. because they pack a lot of people right. on the racetrack and they're very popular. Now, there's another series, Lucky Dog. Now, Lucky Dog is interesting because all it is is a bracket race. It's just a bracket race. And so, yes, there's some really excellent drivers. As a matter of fact, I would say that that they would rival that of many of the drivers in champ cars. There's no question about it. Right, but right. the way that they do their rules, regs, and all that sort of stuff is more uh, just like a bracket race. And for those people that have raced in uh, in Lucky Dog, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so it isn't really truly mm -hmm. competitive racing on an even playing field. Then there's WRL, which I am in the process of potentially doing a little bit of a race with, with a pro team that's interested in cultivating me. And so I'm working on that right now. And WRL is, uh, um, is something that um, uh, there's a lot of people with a lot of money. Uh, I just beeped for Trista so she knows that I'm home. There's a lot of people with a lot of money that, uh, that um, uh, are going out there and don't have a whole lot of talent. And so there's a lot of cars getting wadded up and a lot of problems. And um, then there's Champ Car. And where you guys sit with decent rules without necessarily running it like a Gestapo, Rules that are scrutinized by a board so that it keeps everything on an even playing field, but not necessarily taking away the potential edge from, um, you know, with some of the things that you do. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that because I'm not going to give up what my edges are because then the rules will be changed. Um, uh, with, um, with real true strategy in mind, really looking towards the teams and saying, Hey, if you drive with your foot on the floor, you're going to be coming into the pits a whole lot more. If you drive with a little bit more of a conservative nature in order to finish first, you must first finish type mentality that right there would, it really kind of pays very well for a champ car type race. Um, and then last but not least, knowing that you guys are pretty strict about how you um, you work with the performance points and, and how you put every single one of the cars in the top, you know, five um, in, we'll say, Park Ferme at the end so that, you know, people have the opportunity to be able to go through and figure out who the cheaters are and things like that and whether they decide to protest or not. It's pretty obvious who's cheating and who's not. It, that's that's the sort of thing that I think makes for the best series. It's not SCCA where it's diabolically um, challenging with a rule book that's as big as a phone book. It's not NASA where the where the um, the endurance racing is only six hours or eight hours or four hours or whatever, with the exception of Thunder Hill, the twenty five hours of Thunder Hill, which is pretty amazing. It is the it is the middle ground, the donut hole of every single one of those series that I said, and you guys have found a niche. Now, the only problem is, is because of the fact that it takes a tremendous amount of money, talent, manpower, hours, and all that sort of stuff to be national. I realized why you pulled out of the West, because it was difficult to compete against the series that we have, have out here. And, but Dana said, and he promised, he said, we will be coming yeah. back next year to the West and we will be coming back with a head full of steam. And I will be the biggest cheerleader for you guys when you come back. And I will drop anything and everything that I possibly can to be a part of the series because you guys are the best series at an amateur level doing what you do. Thank well, you. that was certainly the answer that uh, <laughs> we, we always love to hear, right. but uh, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, but no, I, I asked that question because I'm involved with several different series and, and every series has their good points and their bad points. Um, but uh, we always talk with people who just, you know, it, it's a, I see 30, 40, 80, 90 cars. There's 120 at Daytona signed up. And I'm thinking, I scratch my head as to what, are the, what is Champ Hard doing right? And, and I think you did a pretty good, good job of giving us the Cliff Notes version of all the different series and, and uh, and where they shine and where they don't. 
Yeah. And it's, um, I think it's obvious to people that have run the different series. I've certainly run the majority of those series and, and I can see where there's very few advantages in any of the other series. Um, I, it is fun though, to do, I, I will say it is fun to do a lemons race oh, yeah. because when they put 150 freaking morons on a track and all you're doing is just sitting there, just, I mean, it's like a video game yeah. and I, that's one, one of us. So they're, so they're doing fun, something funky up at, um, Thunder Hill this time. So they lost their ability to be able to run, um, uh, Sonoma at this particular race only because of the fact that Sonoma ended mm-hmm. up double booking. And of course, who gets the boot was lemons. So lemons turned around and called up their friends up at Thunder Hill and said, Hey, you know, can we do this? And they said, yeah, sure. In order to mix it up, to make it not just seem like another Thunder Hill race, they're doing forward one configuration, backwards another configuration in one day. So they're doing two different directions in one day, two different configs, and then they're doing full track for the second day. And so, Bill, put that in your hat and smoke Uh, it and do that with a champ car race. I think that's cool. (laughs) I'd love to do stuff like we can can go two directions at like um Paris Hill we can do that yeah. kind of stuff and there's some other uh Brainerd they can, they can uh s- change it up that's Brian's area they they do some they have two tracks up there kind of run on top of themselves there well but I think can, you guys are yeah. on high plains and high plains will go to, uh, two to direct two directions I believe as well oh, yeah we're going there for the first uh, first time in a long time I've never been there it they, is an awesome well, track when when Tamp Car does come back west, um, you know there's a brand new track opening at Button Willow. So there'll be two race tracks on the yeah. same facility. Yes. You could certainly run one on Saturday and one on Sunday. So um, there's going to be that option too. So uh, you know lots lots of cool stuff, and and I love the way the Champ Car is open to innovating and changing things up and. And I, I, I don't get a lot of the, we've always done it this way, so we're right. going to continue doing it this way. Right. And uh, that, that's pretty cool to be a part of. So I, I Agreed. And, and out West, if you guys pick and choose your tracks, um, and, and please, I, I hope, Bill, that you'll give me a buzz. Brian, give me a buzz when it comes time for you to come out this direction. Dana, if you're listening, same thing, give me a buzz. If we can pick and choose some tracks um, and and... I know that everybody wants to go to Laguna Seca. Everybody wants to go to Sonoma. You know, a lot of people want to do Thunder Hill, you know, things like that. But um, there's some other tracks that are out this direction that are just unbelievably awesome. And um, it, there there will be some challenges as far as, you know, uh, possibly hotels and things like that. But, um, you know, for us pe- people that are out this direction, when you say something like Chuck Walla, the first thing you think of is, that's an incredibly, incredibly awesome track. It's a really, really great racetrack, although lodging sucks. I get it. Not a problem at all. So you get in with Cruise America and you get 50 of those freaking RVs out there and you have Burning Man at the racetrack and they, just make it a thing. They It'll told, be fun. They told me just bring my sleeping bag so you can get RVs because there's, <laughs> there's they scorpions. Deliver they deliver them out there. There's scorpions out there, isn't there? Yeah, so? <laughs> Snakes. Yeah. Wear boots. I'm a city boy living in the country. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bill. Anything else before we let Scott go? Nah, just uh, say hi to your smoking hot girlfriend there, Scott. She uh, she's always at the track and and always uh, a, a, a joy to be around. And and uh, she's you know she she drives too, right? She does some. Yeah. Um, she prefers to be, well, put it this way. We call her fire and ice. She loves to be in the pit crew. So she'll do oh. the fire bottle and then she'll turn around and do the ice, yeah. uh, you know, the ice in the, in the cool shirt uh, systems and stuff like that. So she's fire and ice. She's also team mom, all that sort of yep. stuff. And she likes, she likes to wear the smoking hot fire suit. That's for sure. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, she doesn't, she doesn't necessarily need to jump in the car. So, but, uh, and she loves you, Bill. Oh my God. She absolutely loves you. So there's one, um, there's so one out I there. Will, I will wish her happy Valentine's day for you. you. How's Thank that? You. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Thanks Scott for joining us. And, uh, since we don't have our production studio up and running, I'm going to have to ask you to hang up. <laughs> copy that let Thanks. me see if i can find the button okay Thank in you. three two one bye. there we go <laughs> yeah. oh boy scott, well bill this is the first i gotta tell you scott's always um, a blast but yeah sorry for those just joining us our production studio out in california is working on emergency power and 
and uh, cell service and not internet and uh, lighting, you know, so we're taking this yeah. show out on the East coast here, but Brian, uh, and he's Scott's a trip, man. We, we, you met him. Is it enough? Yeah. You met him at, uh, at uh, Willow Springs when you were in there last year, when he did the radio show there. And uh, we're going to yeah. be doing a radio show at Harris Hill, by the way. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yep. There we go. So doing some, I, um, uh, I just, uh, I've done over 200, shows here phil and the power's never gone off yeah yeah well we kind of figured something happened because you were talking about the wind and then all of a sudden it went, it went yeah you froze and then you went away and yeah then, then i went into panic mode so yeah uh, well you did a great job so appreciate it yeah um what else what else are we going to talk about because all of my notes are on a computer, uh, on a computer. <laughs> well let's let's um let's talk about making some money not us, right, but our, cool. but our racers. This will be our tech tip. So All we, right. we had, and and I can't send this to you, but so we have two manufacturers that offer contingencies in Champ Car. One of them being Nissan, and of course the other one being Mazda. So the the Nissan contingency is pretty simple. If you sign up with their, uh, they have a whole program details that you click the link on. We have it on our website. And we have it on a. Our forum, uh, forum.champcar.org. Um, you click on that link, fill out the info that, that they need. I think they need, like, fill out a W-4 and stuff like that because they're going to be sending you money or W-2. I don't know. Some, one of those W forms, <laughs> tax forms. But uh, Nissan offers contingencies. Now, right now, I only have the 2022 contingencies up because we haven't finalized the 23, but it's been pretty much the same for the last few years. But uh, you win a race in Champ Car, guess what you're going to get, man? One thousand dollars. I mean, real money, man. Wow. Real cash money. Uh, you have to be driving a Nissan powered Nissan, but it has to, or Datsun. It can be a Datsun too, um, or Datsun three. So Scott can't drop a big block Chevy into his Nissan and go win it. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> yeah, it has to be Nissan, and, and and unfortunately, it can't be one of those other Nissans too. You know the the fancy ones. What do they call those? Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, it has to be a Datsun or Nissan. So uh, okay. first place you win overall thousand dollars. Second place seven hundred fifty. Guess who won seven hundred fifty dollars at uh, Road Atlanta race last a couple of weeks ago? NLS who, Racing. Who? NLS Racing. They won seven hundred fifty bucks. Finished second place. Nice. Third place gets five hundred. Fourth place two hundred fifty. And a five fifth place gets one hundred dollars. But all of that adds up, man. And and it's per race. So yeah. you have two races on a weekend. You win them both. There's two grand right there. We have the other company called Mazda. 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 Let me pull that one up here real <laughs> quick. I actually had made notes, but I'm, again, I went into panic mode and I may have, oh, here we go. It's on my Google Keep. So uh, uh, right now, Mazda has their uh, 2023 uh, National Championship contingency money. Uh, basically, it's it only, you have to qualify for the championship. And then at the end of the year, in your Mazda-powered Mazda car, you're now going up for money. Now, last year for 2022, um, it was split off. So non-Miata racers actually run cash and then at cash prizes. And um, A and B class Miatas won um, points. And the points were valued for a certain amount of money. And they could use those to buy spare parts with on the Mazda store. So right now, let me list off. I didn't get to do this last week because I completely forgot. You know, I had it written okay. down, but I just missed it. But uh, last week's uh, winners for the non-Miata racer payment was Hong North and their MX-3. They won $1,500. Rotary wow. Rocketeers and their RX-7, that won, or that, that won $1,000. They finished second overall. Sorry, second in the, in the class for the, for the Miatas. So it's, it's how you finish right. against other Mazdas. So uh, in A class in the Mi uh, Miata Racer Payment Championship, <laughs> Valerian Steel won in A class. They won 125 points, which is valued at about eighteen hundred and seventy-five dollars. That's one thousand eight hundred and seventy-five. Sure. Momo Champ took second. They had seventy-five points, valued at eleven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Forty-fifth Parallel Motorsports took third. They uh, theirs was valued at fifty points, and theirs was valued at seven hundred fifty bucks. Black Arrow, they uh, they finished with forty points, 
but they'd only run three races. There's a certain amount of races you have to do to qualify. And if you, because they only ran three races, they only got 50% of the, of the prize. Mm -hmm. So, and that's sure. for the whole year. And so they won 300 bucks and then open throttle with their ready car. Um, that took 35 points and that was valued at $525. So in class B, which are the, the larger engine cars, Lone Star Rally Cross finished first in that class. They uh, 125 points, valued at $1,875. AOA's number 155 car, that was 75 points they won, but because they'd only raced in one race, it was it was reduced 80%, so they um, they won 225 bucks. And AOA's five, it's uh yeah, AOA's 585 car, they finished with 50 points, valued at 750 bucks. And then Average Joe's, they'd uh, done seven races for the year. They had 40 points and at $600 and then we had no fifth place finisher. And also with the, um, the non Miatas, we had no third through 10th. So we had no racers registered for that. So yeah, yeah. We, you guys lost out in a lot of money there, but man, what would that money pay for man? Well, I mean, I think it would pay for tires, maybe some fuel, yeah. maybe a trip or two I mean, to another race. Yeah, entry. Fifteen hundred bucks—that's a good chunk of a race weekend. Yep, yep, and that's just the Miatas. The uh, Nissans—they'll get, um, you know, a thousand dollars a race. Man, that's uh, you yeah. can win a few races. You can get some. You can go racing even more. Yeah, absolutely, cool stuff. Yep, and then um, yeah. So that's uh, that's a tech tip. Join, uh, look around, and ask us for any contingencies. If you guys have a company, you want to offer any contingencies, let us know and. And um, we have some uh, some sponsorships still opened up for 2023. So we've already had a couple of companies call or talk to us last week about bring coming on and and helping our racers out and then helping Champ Car as well. Um, so what's going on with you, man? You 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 worked this past weekend with the SCCA. They had their uh, race at Coda. Um, yeah, pretty fun race. Yeah, we had the uh, second, uh, actually third and fourth round of the super tour. And, uh, that was at circuit of the Americas. So we're, I guess that's what one, two tenths of the season is, is behind us now. Uh, our next event is, uh, not next this weekend, but next weekend at button willow. Uh, so that's going to be rounds, uh, five and six. And, uh, we, uh, we put them up on the SCCA official YouTube page. If anybody wants to watch and, and uh, Bill Bill came in and and made fun of me, which was nice of him. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, I can always count on my. You know, if you can't count on your friends to really yeah. pick on you, who else can you count on, right? You mean the hurry up and wait, so, the hurry up and wait show. <laughs> every yeah, time, yeah, every, yeah. every time I came into the room, it was like waiting between races. It was like, come on, man, I got to see a race, but because I left and had to do some stuff, and I missed yep, the good racing. Yep, but there so. was some good. The Spec Miata race was actually pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, no. WRL had their race at uh, Road Atlanta, which was uh, I was going yep. back and forth between the two. Of course, Champ Cars uh, a rest weekend, preparing a lot of folks preparing for VIR, which is coming up here in uh, about two weeks. And um, we have a. Uh, oops, I'm trying to click the. Sorry, wrong links. What am I? There it is. <laughs> um, right now for VIR, we've got 31 cars signed up. 12 hour race on the South Course which is uh, always a fun track to race on. Um, we've done pretty – I my team's done actually pretty well there. We finished a second against James Clay, James Clay's uh, Bimmer World. <clears throat> and um, – or what were they called? They're not Bimmer World. They were uh, Redline – I don't know. Redline and Bimmer World cars. But, uh, yeah, James Clay, and fast driver, pro driver. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're, uh, we got a lot of guys signed up for this race. Um, who, who stands out here? RV graphics and wraps are two cars and Sparrow speeds are Sparrow speeds getting faster and faster as they go through here. And NLS is bringing two cars. They've got their new, uh, VW car. They're going to put the kids in and the two forty SX, which just came off a of second place at, uh, at, uh, uh, road Atlanta, um, full send motorsports and their BMW. They do pretty well. Um, and I'm probably missing Oh, bliss racing. Of course, is my perennial favorite because you know, I race with them. And average Joe's, yeah. he got into a pretty big accident there at uh, Road Atlanta, but it looked like uh, following him online, he's got that front end all straightened out, pointed where it needs to go, and uh, 
they'll have a new nose back on that car and back to racing here in a couple of weeks. And then after that, yeah. we're headed to uh, Harris Hill. I'll be headed out for that one. We'll be doing a radio show there. So you're welcome to join me anytime, Brian. Um, we'll be doing a radio show like this. We might have some video. It really depends on how much bandwidth I have. It's hard for me to pull to do the show locally because I have to pull video in from the outside and we just don't have the oomph with the internet there to do it. But uh, I can certainly do a radio show with maybe one camera and then Flagtronics, and uh, we just talk a lot. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah. we're, then we're headed up to NCM. We need some more entries for NCM, folks. We're at 21 right now. Um, that's, uh, that's always a great race. And I had talked to a couple of folks today um, our, uh, that we're getting ready to go out there. And, of course, uh, Ozarks is coming up. Um, that's slowly getting up there. We're getting more. We have 12 entries for Ozarks. The cutoff for that one is February 21st, which is uh, – this, this next weekend, I think. Um, and that is, uh, will save you $200 off your entry. Did I say that right? 200, $200 wow. off your entry. If you enter by the 21st of February, um, if you have any questions, contact Chelsea.vickery at champcar.org or info at champcar.org. If you can't remember Chelsea.vickery. Um, and, uh, if you have any questions about that race, um, coming up, let us know, uh, getting the supplementals up as well. I'm, uh, over the next couple of days, I'll be adding some more for later on in the year. Um, we're all the way up to uh, Watkins Glen. We should have the T-shirt art coming in here. Uh, Max said he's going to get to work on that this week. And um, so we'll have more more shirts to sell. We sold completely out of the Road Atlanta shirts, which blew me away. Um, I think I could have sold more if I got them, but we're going to have that up. Oh, and we'll be opening our online store over the next I want to give me two weeks. It might be tomorrow, but give me two weeks. Um, we finally got the account set up, you know, for our stuff. We're going to run it as a separate business, you know, for Champ Car. Um, but it's going to be self-sustaining, and uh, it's a print per view. I think you order the stuff, they print it, send it to you. We don't have to stock it, so we'll save some money on our end. And, um, of course, we're going to overcharge you on everything. Wait, is that how retail works? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. called markup. Yes, it's called yeah, markup. Yeah, so, but uh, we have all kinds of cool things on there, some pictures, and we're going to take all the T-shirt art in the past. We're going to put them up on posters so you can buy posters and pictures and all kinds of cool stuff. So, um, yep, so that's going on. Um, Chelsea and uh, Dana getting ready for the next race is coming up. Chelsea's uh, got a busy couple of weeks. Uh, Dana, not so much. Oh, wait, no, Dana does too. Dana's got a VAR coming up, and then Daytona after that. Last I looked, we had 120, I've scrolled down a lot, 122 signups for uh, Daytona, um, sold out race. But if you want to get on the um, wait list, because uh, we have teams dropping left and right, once they figure out their car, their Super Duty 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona, yeah, 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona wasn't going to be ready in time for the race they ended up dropping out. So, but yeah, get, uh, get on board that and, uh. Um, send an email to Dana.Morrison at champcar.org or again, info at champcar.org and get on the wait list for that race. If, if you want to go on Hawk performance is our <clears throat> sponsor for that race. Uh, take a look at the subs. He's got some cool little ad we just put up in that. And but yeah, uh, we're working on some deals, try to get some stuff for for racers, but yep, that's about it. Love it. You got anything? Love it. Well, I have got anything. I, 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 I'd love the people to take a picture of my, my setup here, um, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so the hard part's going to be putting this into uh, 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 the video into a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure how to, we're going to make this work. I, I forgot to hit record. So completely. I forgot. hit record, but it didn't. No, didn't do anything. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, well, folks, there goes my light. Yeah, you had the best lighting. There goes the, my light, and you have the best lighting of the whole weekend. So, folks, I know. just I, to let. I, you, it's crazy. Just to let you know, we had a power outage out in California, and that's where our studio is. So we moved it out on the East Coast where we don't have a power outage, but we have a very basic show. No sound, no music. I hope we have sound, but, you know, it is what it yeah. is. All right, Brian. All right, my man. I don't even have a script. You want to say the script? Do you know what it is? Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Inside Champ Car. Uh, if you like what you're listening to and what you're seeing, or maybe you're not, so you can leave a message anyway, uh, like, subscribe, uh, all that other fun stuff. Share it on your social media. This was good comedy relief this, this week. Um, you know, 
leave a leave a leave a comment on the Champ Car Facebook page. If it's a good comment, if it's a bad one, leave it on Bill's page. And uh, he's still strong. I'm Brian Belansky, and the lights will be on next week. There we go. See you later, folks. Have a good one. Play music. Play music. Play music. Now we just got to learn how to turn it off. There we go. Bye, guys.